Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Bars and Barbells. I'm Phil with my lovely co-host Samantha. Hey guys, welcome doing, back. We're doing one of her favorites today in Meatloaf. <laughs> we've, we've got two tracks done for Meatloaf. If you haven't checked those out, you gotta go and, and have a look at those. They, they were an introduction to me for Meatloaf because I had never experienced them, but you can hear the stories on how Samantha experienced, experienced <laughs> yes. Meatloaf growing up and why she's a fan of Meatloaf. Um, but uh, we're doing Bad to Hell now. Bad to Hell is obviously new for me. Is it new for you or have you heard I've this I've heard it before. Before, it's on that same album as the original, um, the first song that we did, I believe. Paradise by the Dashboard. Yes. So I believe it's on from the same. I think the album is actually called Bad Out of Hell. I could yeah, be wrong. this is the uh, title track from the album, Bad yeah. Out of Hell. Yeah. So I've heard it, but I'm definitely not as familiar with it as Paradise by the Dashboard. Like, okay. So. And so I was. Uh, we were considering doing um, Two Out of Three Ain't Bad as well, I think is another song you guys were saying we should get into. So maybe we'll do that next. Let yeah. us know if you want to do that one or maybe there's a live version or whatever. But we always appreciate those insights, guys. So he'd hit us in those comments. If you want to like the video, we'd appreciate that as well. But are you ready for another meatloaf video? I'm always ready for another meatloaf video. All right. Video. You heard it here first. Let's get it going. Break it out now before the final crackle is gone. 
So we gotta make the most of our one night together When it's over, you know, we'll both be so <laughs> so do you you know, know the song? I recognize bits and pieces of it. I've definitely heard okay. it, but I don't like know all the words and stuff like pa- Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Okay, but this is very similar to that one in terms of the visuals that we're seeing, mm-hmm. right? It's very different than... And like the performance. What was the last one called that we did? Oh. Where goodness. he's doing the Beauty and the Beast, Beast the yeah. Dracula vibes. Uh, I can't remember. I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head at the moment, but um, I do obviously remember the visuals and everything in that one and... This is yeah. much contrasted to that one, right? Yeah. So we, I feel like that one was more of like an actual music video in the sense of like it was telling the story throughout the the key. while he was singing the song, it was like being acted out. So, yeah. So um, it was the it was like well, I'll, I'll do anything for love, but I won't do that, right? So is that, it yeah. is the song called "I'll Do Anything for Love"? Yes, I think so. Okay. Um, yeah. So. This one, this one also has the same girl, right, from the first, first one, one that we did for Paradise yeah. by the Dashboard, but she's not the singer. She's just think doing the overlay yes. for the vocals on this so one far as well, the duet, right? Yeah. Um, like, well, she appears in the video, but she doesn't sing the actual lyrics mm, and, okay. the, and the vocals on the song. Yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, this one is, I'm kind of finding it a little bit confusing, to be honest, because like... I, is he saying like he's gonna spend the night with her and then he's gonna dip? So it's like a one night sand that he's talking about. <laughs> is that what this is all about? Because, I mean, I guess there's probably more creativity that goes into that. And judging by the first two songs that we've done um, with the Paradise with the Dashboard, and then obviously I'd do anything for love. Both of them were very creative theatrical performances that had a pretty detailed story, which is in the same in this one. Um, like he's ha- he's making me kind of hang on every single word yeah. that he sang through this story like visualize what he's talking about i feel like he's very good at storytelling yeah for 100 percent. he you know i want to know where we're gonna go <laughs> in every single song that we've done yeah but in this one like i said i'm i'm and i was a little bit you know unclear in the last one you guys were getting in those comments and be like how did you not know what he was talking about but Upon research, actually, a lot of people had no idea what he was talking about, so it wasn't just me. And um, but in this one, like I said, he seems like he's saying, you know, there's you know this pure girl, this really you know lovely girl that he wants to spend time with, but after the night's done, he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> so like bad out of hell. Exactly. That's the bad out of hell portion. So, I mean. You know, that's the gist of it that I get, but I feel like there's more creative vibes that are supposed to be a part of this. And maybe we'll get into that in the second half. Yeah. I mean, I like the, I guess, simplified version of what I took from it is kind of like what you just said. But I think like from a storytelling creativity standpoint, I think from like what I'm getting is that he's talking about that they're kind of stuck in this like like how he was painting the picture in the beginning of like all like blood on the streets and people fighting and crime and all that kind of stuff that they're stuck in this like terrible place. Okay. Yeah. True. But that he's that makes sense, yeah. spending like this. And then there's this one pure girl and he wants to spend time with her, but he also needs to get right. out okay. of there like a bad out of hell. That makes so sense. He Cause spend time, but then he has to leave. I wasn't really paying attention wants, like, to the, life. And that portion in the beginning. I was kind of getting a feel for the song. Yeah. I think maybe the last couple of minutes he hasn't talked so much about, the place that he's in. Yeah. So yeah. like you said, and if you reference back to the beginning of the song, yeah. that would make sense. So, and then I think, but like the one part that kind of confused me is that he's been having, alluding to this whole theme of that, like, you know, he's stuck in this place and he wants a better life. So that's why he's like getting out while he can, but they have this one night together. But then he said like, I'll be damned if I stay, but I also might be damned if I leave. And I'd rather be damned spending my night dancing with you. So it was kind of like, well, like, are you saying that you want to stay and spend your time with her? Or are you saying that you're getting out like a bad Well, I think that's the point, though, right? He's saying that he wants to spend his time with her. Yeah. But if, as you said, the place that they're in, he's damned if he stays there. But then because he wants to spend the time with her, if he leaves, he's damned because he's going to be missing her. True. That's fair. So I think that's the point. Anyways, okay. let's get back into it, see where we go. Sinner, 
Before the gates of heaven I'll come crawling on back to you creative genius yeah um, also i love it he has this like hair blowing in the wind effect like his whole performance yeah you know that's i think adding to the drama feel the mm-hmm. dramatization that he puts throughout the entire song the video the story uh it's li- literally like you're you know a short drama mm-hmm. uh, in a musical almost right and you know i think like it's from the composition and the creativity in that composition. I think it's really cool how, for one, you have the bat of the hell theme that we talked about and trying to get out of there like a bat of the hell. But then he, you know, transitioned that into a bat of the hell being your spirit is leaving your body as like a bat of the hell getting yeah. out of there as soon as it can in this accident that's happened. So, you know, putting that, you know, tying up all the loose ends basically. Right. Yeah. Like full circle. Yeah. And, um, that played in with the musical, aspects in terms of there's so many different keys that they use and then bringing in the electric guitar mm-hmm. to add this dramatic yeah, feel cool. before we're getting into the accident obviously his vocal outstanding as well mm-hmm. and being able to tell the story alongside that great yeah. vocal um and uh you know the the idea of 
what we're seeing and the visuals, what we're hearing and what the story is saying all coming together, being composed in a great, great way. I feel like it's, like I said, really creative genius that you're yeah, seeing. Yeah, on top of the fact that it's eight minutes. So it's like doing all of that for so long. Well, it has to be though. Yeah. Because he's he has to do all the things that I just talked about. <laughs> yeah, that's right? fair. Yeah. And, um, you know, like I said, uh, I just don't even know how much was in there from a musical standpoint because I was so focused on the lyrics and the storytelling. Yeah. Um, it was hard to pay attention to both. But I feel like I said, like there were multiple keys and organs and I don't know if there was a synthesizer in there. There's yeah. definitely electric guitar sure. in there. I don't know what other strings might have been in there, but you know, it's a, it's a pretty in-depth composition, man. Mm -hmm. Like it's pretty crazy on the first listen, how much I was taken in. And you generally, when you listen to a song more than once, you pick up a more. Right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think like you said, I was really focused on the vocals, the uh, lyrics and more of like the theatrics of the performance, just because it's like, so like in your face and like right there. Right. So I also wasn't as focused on the instrumentation, but I did really like the electric guitar piece. I thought that was really cool how they brought that in. The energy went up even higher and the drama went up even higher. I didn't think that was possible. Yeah. And it concluded with like the end of the story and then he just kind of fades out with his vocal. Right. Yeah. So that's a great way to finish it off. Yeah. So really enjoyed that experience. I feel like three times now with meatloaf, it's not been just a song. It's been an experience, yes. which is unique. And, uh, I really appreciate that obviously to stand out as an artist, you need to do something different. And sometimes people or artists or groups will do, you know, extra, extra, extra just to make them stand out. But to me, it doesn't add a value. And I think what he does or what they do in this song is, and the other ones that we've done is they stand out, they add something extra, but it's valuable in how they do it. Yeah. No, I agree. I loved that. That was great. I hope you guys enjoyed our reaction to Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell. Great, in my opinion. <laughs> Sam enjoyed it as well. Yes. You reminisced a little bit. Yeah. It brought back some mem more yes. memories for you. Yes. And uh, let us know if you guys want to go in, if you guys want us to go into two out of three, it ain't bad. Yes. Saw it come up on the Excited. screen there while we were watching this one. So let us know. Uh, hit those comments. Hit the like button if you haven't done so already. If you haven't subscribed, you're missing out. So you got to hit that now and make sure you hit the notification bell as well. That'll make sure you don't miss out on any of our videos. We drop two every single day between music, comedy, and sports. We got lots of entertainment for you. So don't miss out on that going forward. And, uh, We'll see you on our next video. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.